Well, it's a great pleasure to, to have you today. You are in a very exciting industry. Mm -hmm. You are uh, number one today in this uh, drone business, but more than that, uh -huh. ca can you tell us a little bit about you know the story of the company, how it was started? Mm -hmm. All right, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, the company was founded in 2006 by our founder, Frank Wan, and he was studying in Hong Kong for his uh, uh, master degree. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since a child, he was dreaming of being able to fly like a bird. Mm -hmm. I think many children share the same dream. The difference is a lot of people forgot about that dream and he never did. He never gave up on that dream. And as a matter of fact, he turned that dream into reality and he turned that dream also into a very successful business. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the whole story started really with his dream and vision that he would not give up on. And I think that's one thing that puts the young people that work for a DJI together as well. Mm. As soon as they really believe in that power of dream, mm. they would not give up so easily. But passion is absolutely critical mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to build a successful business. But what have been the other key success factors mm -hmm. for, right. for, for your company? Yeah, so when Frank started the company, he first looked at the flight control system. Again, a lot of people at the time uh, that, uh, you know, these RC mm. hobbyists that were flying a uh, remote control helicopter and it was very difficult to control. For Frank, he's, he believed that one, one of these days it got to be much easier mm -hmm. so that people could really use it mm -hmm. because it was so challenging that uh, only a very, you know, a uh, small percentage of people would be able to, to control it. Yeah. And so he enjoyed flying it, he enjoyed the fun of it, and he simply wanted that fun to be shared by mm -hmm. many more people around the world, preferably by everyone. So he really focused on working on, you know, the uh, autonomous flight controller that could stabilize the uh, mm -hmm. machine so that there is in infinite possibility mm -hmm. after you can stabilize the um, machine, then you can look at taking photos, videos, and things like that. So he started working on that flight control system, and frankly, he spent quite a few years doing that in the first few years. Uh, when he started small and not many people share the same dream he did, he had a very small team. He worked around uh, the clock with the engineers, but once that uh, flight controller was uh, developed, was mature enough, that mm. really changed the industry at the time. And then gradually we decided, once you already have the control system, which is really the brain of the whole copter, the, the uh -huh, home uh -huh. drone as you, you would call it. Um, so in some way that, you know, for example, the DJI Phantom, the iconic product line that we have, it's really like a minion robot in the air, uh -huh, and uh -huh. that flight controller is the brain of it. Once you have the brain of the technology, it wouldn't be so difficult for you to mm. present you know, a whole package. Again, in believing that that kind of fun and technology should be shared with mm. a wider crowd around the world, he started developing everything uh, by ourselves. And so, uh, strange enough, mm. um, as the professor was asking me before, uh, Frank was not the first one to develop a camera. He was not the first one that thought about flying, and he was not the first one that thinks about stabilized footage. But I think he was the first one that put all these Everything pieces together. together, so that that you know a few mm. uh, a full puzzle uh, has been finally mm. complete. So, what's a major constraint to growth? To do is it regulation? Mm -hmm. Because in some countries, I mean, the government has been kind of puzzled. You know, we have had drones flying over nuclear stations, etc. Mm -hmm. Is that an issue for you, or how do you plan well, to deal with Well, I think this? in order for the entire industry to scale, mm -hmm. uh, truly, we, uh, you know, the regulation is one aspect that people have to consider. Yeah. Uh, Quite luckily, I'm very happy to see through DJI's efforts, as a market leader, we feel obligated that we should do more than mm. the other companies. And very luckily, uh, I think uh, globally, a lot of authorities have come to realize that we're actually on the same side as them, yeah. because we both want the same thing. We want people to fly uh, safely and responsibly. Mm. Uh, we both realize how much impact the technology brings, mm -hmm. not just for the consumer market, but in terms of yeah. a lot of industries. Yes. It could really, it has a lot of yeah. social and economic benefits that the government yeah. would not oversee. Yeah. And so uh, once they realize that kind of benefits, they, as much as they have some uh, concerns, they mm -hmm. would look mm -hmm. at it fairly and try to balance it out. Uh, once the regulation is able to catch up with the pace of innovation, then yeah. you can really see globally this industry will grow. Mm -hmm. And um, so to show the authorities 
that we are willing to work with them. DJI has actually made tremendous efforts in this regard. Mm -hmm. And from the product development side, we have uh, put in a lot of uh, safe safety features into the product, mm -hmm. so it would reduce greatly the uh, rates of the accidents in case a pilot in, is inexperienced or panicking. And so, um, and for example, a lot of governments would not want you to fly around the airports, yeah. and so we created no-fly zones around uh, these, you know, major airports around the world, so that no one can, you know, fly into this area. Okay. So some of these safety uh, features that we mm -hmm. embed, the mm -hmm. government have really come to appreciate, and we go, we really go beyond that. Uh, we have a DJI app, which once you're connected with our products, that allows you to see what the drone is looking at, and. By downloading that app, particularly on your first flight, you'll get a checklist. And the checklist will remind you what to do and what not to do in particular this region. Mm -hmm. And so that really helps educate the consumer. And then in some markets where the regulation have been more explicit than others, then we really take the advantage of that and then work with the local authorities by mm -hmm. putting some of these pamphlets uh, in the local language inside the product so that mm -hmm. once people receive them in this region they will be reminded once again what they can yeah. they can do and what can they're they not allowed to do and then we have also organized a campaign called the new pilot experience around the world and this year we have done over 600 by far mm -hmm. and it has been tremendously popular around the world because mm -hmm. as much as we simplify the technology better than anyone else there's no guarantee that everyone will be able to get a full, you know, will be able to use the products 100% yeah. uh, on day one. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we organized this campaign to teach people very hands-on experience with, you know, the, the DJI products. In this case, then it would, you know, the people can learn how to use it more safely. And I think uh, globally, the authorities have really quite appreciated working with uh, uh, a market leader like DJI. In America, for example, the FAA has a campaign, has a great campaign called Know Before You Fly. So everything you need to know before you take it, uh, before you take off. And DJI has been heavily involved in that campaign in helping educate the consumers as well. Okay. So you have opened up a brand new uh, territory. So you must be facing also a lot of competitors or mm -hmm. people who want to, you know, displace you. And so how do you deal with competition? Mm -hmm. How do you? Uh, yeah, ignore certainly. the competition. Yeah, to certainly we are aware of uh, many other companies mm -hmm. that try to develop a similar technology. Uh, at this stage, I would say in terms of our product portfolio, yeah. the stability and the high performance of our products mm -hmm. combined with the affordable pr prices and the accessibility, I don't think anyone has come quite close to DJI yet. Mm -hmm. And yet we, we are aware of the uh, up and coming competition. Yeah. On the one hand, we're actually very confident that we will stay ahead of the competition because while other people try to follow what we do, in our R&D lab, we're already developing technologies <laughs> that good. will sound very futuristic if you all know of it. But frankly, a few years ago, when you look at what we're able to do with our equipment today, uh, maybe just a couple of years ago, people would think mm -hmm. this happens only in a futuristic movie. So in terms of that, I think we are able to keep the edges uh, ahead. And I think apart from the product development side, uh, DJI has also a, um, expanded the international footprint mm -hmm. rather ahead of time. I think the top management uh, led by Frank has the vision to really mm -hmm. see what markets make sense and what potential there is in other industry and other regions. Uh, Take uh, Japan, for example. We set up our offices in Japan long before the sales started to pick up yes. because we truly saw the potential here. And then that's why we, you know, we, we decided to set up offices here mm -hmm. uh, uh, ahead of many other companies that are not locally from Japan. And so, you know, uh, in terms of that, we are very confident that we stay ahead, ahead of it. We actually very much embrace the competition. I think competition in this new exciting industry would only make the industry more interesting. And, you know, we can't wait to see what innovative uh, technology can evolve. And, uh, but I'm very sure that DJI would again remain a market leader in the whole involvement of the industry. Well, thank you very much. It's a fascinating story. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominic.